Hi everyone and welcome to our lesson on elastic potential energy. Just another form of energy like potential energy and kinetic energy, but this has to do with springs, compression, stretching, and things like that. So elastic potential energy is equal to one half kx squared. We should also know the force of the spring is equal to kx. Things we should know, k stands for the spring constant, so how stiff or loose a spring is. So if there's a very high spring constant, that means it's very, uh, it's very stiff. And this x represents displacement, how much it was displaced from its equilibrium position. So for example, this would be its equilibrium position, and this, when it's compressed like this, the, uh, how much it's compressed is going to be x, okay? Or how much it's stretched is also going to be x, okay? All right, let's look at some example problems. Uh, when a force of 120 newtons applied to a spring, it causes a stretching of 0 0.225 meters. What is the spring constant? Okay, so we know we we're applying a force on this of 120 newton. And when we do that, it stretches uh, 0 0.0225 meters. And now we're looking for the spring constant. So let's look at this. The force of a spring is equal to kx. 120 is equal to k, which we're looking for, and x, 0 0.0225. Let's do some algebra. 120 divided by 0 0.0225, and we get 5,333 newton per meter. Okay? That's how stiff this spring is. What is the potential energy of this spring when it is compressed by 0 0.035 meters? So we know, again, elastic potential energy is equal to 1 half kx squared. So this is going to be equal to 1 half k, 5,333, x, 0 0.035 squared. And let's see what we get here. 0 0.035 squared times 5,333 times 0.5, and we get around 3.3 .3 joules. So that's how much energy we stored on this thing. So not that much energy, it won't snap that much. Okay. All right, moving on. A 1.7 kilogram block slides on a horizontal frictionless surface until it encounters a spring with a spring constant 955 newton per meter. The block comes to rest after compressing the spring a distance of 0 0.046 meters. Find the initial speed of the block. Okay, so what are we looking for? Initial speed of the block. We know when it hits, this thing is going to compress by 0 0.046 meters. So let's try to figure this out. How we want to do these kind of problems, we want to do mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. And I would suggest writing it all out. So potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial and now that we're talking about springs, we're going to do plus elastic potential energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final plus elastic potential energy final. So let's start thinking about this. So this is the initial, whoops, initial, and this is the final. So let's look at this. At the beginning, is there any potential energy? No, it's on the ground. So this is going to be zero. At the beginning, is there any kinetic energy? Yes, this thing is moving. At the beginning, is there any elastic potential energy? No, nothing is compressed or stretched. So this is also zero. Now let's look at the final part. Is there potential energy uh, at, at the final? No, it's still on the ground. I mean, maybe it's, it's like invisible ground, but it is still on the ground. So this is still potential energy zero. Is it moving? No, it gets fully compressed. The block comes to rest after compressing. So that means this kinetic energy is also zero. Is there elastic potential energy? Yes, it is compressed. The pr spring is compressed. So now let's set these two equal to each other. So one half mv squared is equal to one half kx squared. Okay, because all of this energy, all this kinetic energy turns all into uh, elastic potential energy. Energy is conserved. So what we can do, we can get rid of the one half because it's on both sides. We know the mass is going to be 1.7. V squared, that's what we're looking for. K, 955. And X, which is equal to 0 0.046 squared. So now let's find V. 
0.046 squared times 955 divided by 1.7. And then let's find the square root of that. And we get 1.09 meters per second. Hopefully that went, uh, that made sense. I would highly recommend writing it all out like I did here and finding what goes to zero and what are the important pieces of information to figure this out. All right, let's look at this next problem. A 2000 newton per meter spring is compressed a distance of 0.3 meters against a wall with a 0 0.075 kilogram block ready to be released off the spring. The block is released and it slides along a frictionless surface. Calculate the elastic potential energy stored in the spring. Okay, so what we know is this is compressed 0 0.03 meters. We also know this block has a mass of 0.75 kilograms. All right, let me change the pointer for a second. Okay, once now now we do that, let's see if we can figure out this question. So A says calculate the elastic potential energy. Shouldn't be too hard. EPE is equal to one half kx squared. So if we just plug things in, one half k, which is equal to two thousand, and x, which is equal to 0.3 squared. Now let's figure this out. 0.3 squared times 2,000 times 0.5, and we get 90 joules. Okay. Part B, calculate the speed of the block when it is released and loses contact with the spring. All right, B. So what we should know is all this elastic potential energy, once it loses contact with the spring, all of that is going to turn into a velocity, so kinetic energy. So all that elastic potential energy is going to turn into kinetic energy. Okay, so we know this 90 joules is going to take turn into one half mv squared. Uh, put in this. Uh, do, do, so one half. Oh no, sorry. What we have is 90 is equal to one half mass, which is equal to 0.75 v squared. Do a little bit of math. This 90 times 2 divided by 0.75. Find the square root of that and we get 15.5 meters per second. Okay. Part C now says the block then glides onto a rough surface where the coefficient of kinetic friction be measured between the block and the surface is 0.25. How far does the block slide on the rough surface before it comes to stop? So we know mu k over here is equal to 0 0.25. And we want to find out how far does it go before it comes to a stop. Okay. So a few ways we can do this. What we can first do is maybe we draw a free body diagram of this as it goes. Oops. So we know there's, wow, sorry about that, guys. We know there's a force of gravity, force normal and a force of friction. We know that the force of gravity is going to be 7.5 times 10, so 75 newtons. Force of normal will be the same thing. And then we know the force of friction is going to be 75 times the coefficient 0 0.25. So 75 times 0 0.25. And we get 18.75 newtons. Now maybe let's see if we can find what the acceleration is or how much it slows down as it's on the rough surface. So sum of all force in the x equals mass times acceleration in the x, which is going to be negative 18.75, which is going to be equal to 7.5 times acceleration. And let's see what the acceleration is, 18.75 divided by 7.5, and we get negative 2.5 meters per second. Now, what we should know is when the block enters this rough spot here, it's going 15.5 meters per second. So V initial is 15.5. We know acceleration is equal to negative 2.5. Um, we know it's going to come to a complete stop. So it's going to be V final zero, and we're looking for a displacement. Now let's look for the formula that has all four of these. And we should have vf squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2a change in x. 0 is equal to 15.5 squared plus 2a negative 2.5 change in x. Let's do some algebra. 15.5 squared, bring that to the other side, make it negative. 
divided by negative 5, and we get 48.05 meters. Okay, a little bit more difficult. There's actually going to be a little bit of a trick of how we can figure this out later on. Uh, however, uh, we're not going to learn that right now. All right, so to make it a little easier. All right, let's look at this next example. A ball of mass 2 kilograms is dropped from a height of 1.5 meters from the ground onto a massless spring. The spring has an equilibrium length of 0.5 meters. The ball compresses the spring by an amount of 0.2 meters by the time it comes to a stop. Calculate the spring constant of the spring. Okay, a few things we got to do here. First, what I like to do is I like to make the zero line at the lowest point that the object is going to go. So I like to make the zero line the lowest point it's going to go. So this is the zero line. That's where I'm going to make it. You could honestly put it anywhere, but I believe it's the easiest at that point. So now we know this is 0.2 meters and this is 0.5. So this is going to be one meter up here. So this is going to be 1.2 meters from the lowest point it's going to get. Okay. That being said, now let's try to figure out everything we know using conservation of energy. Mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. So let's do this again. Potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial plus elastic potential energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final plus elastic potential energy final. And now let's look at all this. This is going to be the initial right here. Okay, and the final is all the way over here when the ball is over here. Okay, so at the very beginning, is there potential energy? Yes, it has a certain height. At the very beginning, is there kinetic energy? No, it's dropped, so the velocity is zero at the very beginning. At the very beginning, is there elastic potential energy? No, it's not stretched or compressed, so this is zero. At the end, is there potential energy? No, it's on the zero line. At the end, is there kinetic energy? No, it comes to a stop. So there's no kinetic energy. At the end, is there elastic potential energy? Yes, it is stretched uh, 0.2 meters. Or I shouldn't say stretched, it's compressed 0.2 meters. So now let's start to plug things in. Uh, mass times gravity times height is equal to 1 half kx squared. The mass of the ball is 2, gravity is 10. Height is 1.2 meters above the zero line. And it's going to be equal to 1 half k, that's what we're looking for, x squared, which is going to be 0 0.2 squared. Now let's plug this all in. 2 times 10 times 1.2 times 2 divided by 0 0.2 squared. And we get k is equal to 1200 newton per meter. Okay, hopefully that made sense. All right, uh, let's do this one. Springs are oriented vertically as shown in the above diagram. Initially, the spring is compressed 4.6 centimeters and has a spring constant of 955 newton per meter. The block, which has a mass of 1.7 kilograms, is at rest. When the block is released, it accelerates upwards. Find the speed of the block when the spring has returned to its equilibrium position. Okay, so this is 4.6 centimeters, or I'm going to say 0, 0.0. 46 meters okay uh, so we're kind of pushing this down and then it accelerates up like this okay so again let's do everything like this mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final this is the initial we're going to call it when it's pressed down and then when it starts to fly up we're going to call that the final okay and energy is conserved so let's do this potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial plus elastic potential energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final plus elastic potential energy final. At the ve and, and let's find the lowest point. We're going to say the lowest point is right here. That's the lowest point of the problem, and we're going to call that the zero line. So at the very beginning, is there potential energy? No, it's on the zero line. At the very beginning, is it moving? No, it's at rest. Is it at rest? So that means it's zero. Is it compressed? Yes, it is compressed. So there is elastic potential energy. Now let's look up here. Is there potential energy? Yes, it's above the zero line. 
Is there kinetic energy? Yes, it's moving. Is there elastic potential energy? No, it's at its equilibrium position. So let's figure this out. One half kx squared is equal to mgh plus one half mv squared. And what are we looking for? The speed, so this is velocity here. So one half k 955 x 0 0.046 squared is equal to mass, which is 1.7 times gravity 10 height, so it's 0 0.046 meters away from the zero line, plus one half mass 1.7 b squared. All right, let's try to simplify things as much as possible. I don't want to do it in one go this time because a little bit, there's a lot of numbers here. So this is going to be 1.0. 0, 1. And then we have 17 times 0.046. And then this is going to be 0.782. Then let me simplify this 0.5 times 1.6. Uh, 0.85. So this 1.01 .01 is equal to 0 0.782. Whoops. Plus 0.85 b squared. Bring this to the other side. 1.01 .01 minus 0.782 equal to 0.228 divided by 0.85, finding the square root of that, and then I get velocity is equal to 0 0.52 meters per second. Okay? So hopefully that made sense. We're going to do one more, and then we're going to be done with this. A four kilogram bowling ball is dropped from rest at a height of one meter. Okay, four kilograms. There is an unstretched spring below. Once the bowling ball touches the spring, the bowling ball slows down as it compresses the spring. The spring is constant is 490 newton per meter. Okay, find the velocity of the ball at position D. Okay, so we're looking at position D here. All right, so we're looking for the velocity of the ball at position D. One thing we should know, the lowest point is right here, okay? So if we're looking at that, the lowest point is right here. So if I'm looking at that, that means it's going to be, this is going to be 0 0.8 meters uh, from where it starts to the lowest point. So I'm making this the zero line, okay? Again, let's do the same thing. Uh, since energy is conserved, mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. At the uh, potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial plus elastic potential energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final plus elastic potential energy final. I know this gets annoying, but you don't want to mistake. You want to kind of write everything out. So at the beginning, is there potential energy? Yes, it's above the zero line. Is there kinetic energy? No, it's at rest. Is there elastic potential energy? No, it's not stretched or compressed. At the end, is there potential energy? No, it's on the zero line. Is there kinetic energy? Yes, it's still going to be moving down, and that's what we're looking for. Is it compressed? Yes, it is compressed a little bit. So what is it compressed? 0.2 meters? Yep, 0.2 meters. So let's start plugging things in. MGH is equal to 1 half MV squared plus 1 half KX squared. M, which is equal to 4, gravity 10, height is 0.8 meters above the zero line, is equal to 1 half M, 4, V squared, that's what we're looking for, plus 1 half K, which is 490, X, which is 0.2 squared. It's, it's compressed 0.2 meters. So let's figure, uh, let's simplify this a bit. 40 times 0.8, this is going to be 32 is equal to 2v squared plus 0.2 squared times 490 times 0.5, 9.8. So let's do 32 minus 9.8 divided by 2, and then square root of that, and we get velocity is equal to 3.33 meters per second. Okay? Thanks for watching this. I know this was a bit difficult, so uh, please watch it back if you need to. But next time, we're going to be talking about work. So great job watching.